This is the first chapter about the physical reality of traveling in time. Please welcome. The possibility of traveling in time was discovered by Albert Einstein in 1905 in his famous theory of special relativity. For understanding why we can travel in time, let's first analyze the concept of relative velocity. Imagine that Charles is flying with a magnitude of velocity of 200 km per hour. Very fast, eh? Adrian is then walking away from him at 5 km per hour. Their relative velocity is naturally 195 km per hour, which is the subtraction of the two velocities. Let's assume now that Elena is driving her vehicle at a speed of 150 km per hour. On the other hand, her friend William, who is a magician, is flying at a speed of 100 km per hour pointing to her. The relative speed is then 250 km per hour, which is just the superposition of both velocities. This is the case because they are just approaching to each other. I see that the speed of light is 300,000 km per second. I also perceive the same velocity for the light. The speed of light is invariant with respect to any observer moving at a constant velocity. It is what in physics we call an invariant. The key discovery of Einstein was to realize that the speed of light is an invariant. Then the relative velocity with respect to the light is always the same speed of light, namely 300,000 km per second. This is the case, no matter in which direction we move with respect to the light, we will always perceive the speed of light as 300,000 km per second. If the speed of light is an invariant, then the space and the time are relative to the observers. In other words, the traveling time is possible. And my clock it has been 2 hours and 17 minutes since Richard's departure. In my clock, it has been one hour since my departure. Then, if Richard, for example, is flying on his spaceship at 90% of the speed of light, his clock will lapse at a different rate with respect to the clock of Christina, who is not moving. In this particular case, one hour in Richard's clock corresponds to two hours and 17 minutes in Christina's clock. Or one day for Richard corresponds to two days and seven hours for Christina, for example. Christina is suffering an effect which we call time dilation. The effect decreases when Richard reduces his velocity and increases when Richard increases his speed. In this example, we can say that Richard is traveling to the future of Christina. I am traveling in time. Indeed, Richard. You are traveling to Christina's future. Good luck, safe trip. For me, Richard has traveled 10 million kilometers. Feel that I have only traveled 4.35 millions of kilometers. Another way to perceive the travel of Richard to the future of Christina is by looking at the travel distances perceived by each one. Richard feels that he travels a much shorter distance than what Christina describes. He's perceiving the contraction of lens, which is just equivalent to the time dilation perceived by Christina in her frame of reference. Cesar, flying his super fast plane, thinks that John's car is short because he perceives all the lens contracted in his direction of traveling, not only the distance that he travels, but also any object in his direction of traveling is contracted. This is due to the fact that he is traveling in time to the future. Erika doesn't perceive the same because she is not moving. Hey man, your car is so short. I perceived his car's length as normal. Traveling in time is possible. In this video, we have analyzed the first method for traveling to the future, not to the past. The method consists in creating a machine traveling at large speeds. The closer our time machine approaches to the speed of light, the larger will be the travel to the future. 
please wait our next video where we will explore other methods for traveling in time. If you liked this video, please subscribe to the channel. For any suggestions, please contact us by the email address appearing on the screen. You can also suggest topics which you want us to mention in future videos. See you next time!